Good afternoon, ma'am. So today we would like presentation about theory of tail spender, ninety and eighty. Before start the presentation, I would I will introduce myself. My name is Desa Putu Ispasarasti for for last digit number one two one five, and my partner name is Kaderika Pratnyawati, and the last digit number is one one eight seven. We we are from group five. In this slide, uh, there are the introduction. introduction. Now, it is widely revealed that in this world, the priorities meant because they have the power to organize the evidence so that it can be seen to strengthen the myth. It seems from a centuries old myth that is now firmly entrenched in almost every aspect of our existence. And then there is a rule that has an understanding regarding the world being dominated by men is one might expect. That men represent the positive while women, of course, represent the negative. It is the uh, rule that must be changed if we are to develop a view of world in which both sexes are given equal fill. And in the reality, we carry out a life in a world where, where we must be required to follow the rules that have been made. And one of the important factors in the constructions in, of this reality is language. The Spender, uh, uh, 1980, stated that language is not ne neutral and is not just a vehicle that carries ideas. Language is um, our uh, uh, language is our means of classifying and organizing the world our means of manipulating reality. And then according to Dale Spender, 1980, we we'll use brain symbols to describe language with symbol of never knew the real thing. And in this particular example, is evidence that when a principle has been encoded in our language, such as sexism, eh, the implication for reality can easily be seen. Okay, next slide, please. This slide is about quotes of the theory. Well, the, while there is sexist language and sexist theory culturally available, the observation of reality tends to be sexist too, because according to Spender, which is explained in her quotes, is on the one, on the one hand in over immense freedom as it allows to create the world we live in, but also, we are restricted by the creation, limited to its confines, and fearing any modification to the structure we have uh, initially uh, created. This continue constitutes language as a trap. Okay, next slide, please. And uh, what theory? The what theory does Dale Spender provide regarding language and gender? Dale Spender is a feminist who believes in the dominance approach. In his theory, she supports the dominance theory and advocates a radical view of language as a, as a embodiment of the structure that supports male power. She also supports the notion of Zimmerman and West work on the view of men as the norm and on her own notion of a uh, patriarchal order. Okay, next slide. And this slide, uh, there are two major approaches to gender and language. The first one is deficit approach and the second is dominance approach. There are two scholars found that males are dominant in conversation than women. The first is tend to initiate conversation, interrupt cross sex conversation, and the second woman tends to be more passive due to their lower social status. Okay, next presentation will be continued by my friends Rika. Time is yours. Okay, thank you for uh, the service for the time. So Next, I want to continue to explain about the Dale Spender. So, uh, 
Dell Spanner claims that it is uh, very difficult to challenge this power system because the way we think, uh, the way we think uh, about the world is part of the range force male power. And then she once said that because there is sexism in language, it doesn't enhance the position of males, and males have uh, had control over over the cultural production of form. And it is credible to assume that uh, males have uh, uh, encode sexism into the language to consolidate, consolidate their claims of super superiority. And then, uh, what is explained in this theory? So, in her book that entitled uh, "Man Made Language," in this theory, the Spender, 18, 1980, explained that uh, men as the dominant uh, group, uh, as the dominant group, have produced language, thought, and reality, and historically structures, categories, and meaning have been discovered by men. So certainly not by all men, and then validated uh, with reference to other men. So in this process, women play a little or nothing. It is male subjectivity that show this meaning, including the meaning that they are all subjective and objectively. And then the spender produced a strong and systematic analysis of the effect of such system on the language produced by men and women uh, used in the communication, and in. 1980, the spender state that the man dominated, uh, dominated a woman in language. This means that the features of woman's language are not are not uh, of their making. Therefore, language uh, is that like is inherently uh, inherently in part part pa, patri, pa, I'm sorry patriarchal. And then next. Uh, we can see from the analysis a uh, semantic aspect uh, for, uh, from the book created by Del Spanner. She quotes quite widely uh, related to evidence and assumption uh, for masculine determin determiners as uh, positive and female as negative or market for, for example, we use the doctor or lady doctor. Yeah, from the Example, this is uh, we can see that uh, just from the example, uh, the sign doctor always refers to men, uh, and the mention of doctor is also often done to a woman who work as a doctor, uh, and then is really mentioned as a lady doctor. Another example is that uh, uh, she showed that the meaning of some word are different when applied uh, to women and men. For example, the sentence or the conversation about the his professional and then says a, a professional. A pair of terms that seems uh, that seems to have more or less the same meaning. The only difference is that one is uh, applied to men while the other is applied to women. In addition, a uh, lord and lady. Uh, this is the example also in this uh, in this theory. And Lord uh, preserved uh, its initial meaning. Uh, Where's lady and lady and why is that like the under undergone a process of democratic uh, leveling, and it's no longer uh, no longer to reserve for women of high high rank for uh, this situation. Next. Many ex many examples are given to demonstrate the grammar grammarians the development of this practice in this in the face of usage the to the contrary and the spender continues to discuss the effect on women of this this the debasement of the roles in society in the book of the paper men uh, made language they are used to things that one for the first. Uh, that language determines the limit of our world and then construct our reality. And second is the language is man made it uh, created by the males of the species and faces and is still primarily primarily prim primarily under male control. So we can conclude that in the theory of those people who is uh, a feminist from Australia, 
uh, I'm sorry, this is a mistake. He explains that men's language dominate woman's language. This means that the features of woman language are not of their making because according to Dale Spanger, the way we speak is indicated by our social standing. Those with power and office can talk uh, more and interrupt. And because men associate you have more power over women, they can talk a lot and interrupt. However, Dale Spanger does not uh, argue women to com compete with men speaking and interrupting. Interrupting. So, I think this is uh, that's all about my presentation. Our presentation about the girl spinner theories. Uh, if there is any comment and suggestion, you can uh, you can give from the comment section. Thank you.